Welcome to the masterclass Hippologic Clicker Training. My name is Sandra Popoma. And if you're listening to this, they know that this is the recording. So in today's masterclass, I will give you an overview, but I'll start a little bit about my own journey, how I trans, um, Form from negative reinforcement to positive reinforcement. What do I like about it? And then I will share my proven positive reinforcement training system. This is how you get to your dream results while creating that connection with your horse, because that's one of my values, making training a win-win and really listen to your horse. I have found that that gives better results than just ignoring what your horse wants and needs and go on with training. So I will address the questions that you have put in the registration form. I will give you a peek inside the Hippologic Training Academy about the courses, the content, what you will learn when you join. And today the bonus is that you can save hundreds of dollars when you join the membership the Hippologic Clicker Training Academy today is only open until Sunday midnight and if you want to know the link because it's not on my website it's a secret link then go to your worksheets and in the worksheets at the end it says read more about the Academy if you click that that's how you can uh, join the Academy it's only open for 48 hours and I only allow 40 people in total in 2024. Few spots are already taken. So if you would like to have like a whole year of coaching from me, then consider that a little bit about me. I've studied animal management. That's why I have a bachelor degree in science. And one of my majors was wildlife management and zoos and in zoos, um, the focus was really on ethical animal keeping. So if you would put an elephant into a horse stall size uh, environment for 20 hours or longer, that would not have been um, considered ethical. Yet we do these things with our horses all the time. So that's how I learned in my study to really transfer that ethical and the welfare part of animals to horses and that's when i decided that i can help people increase their horses welfare by just educating and using positive reinforcement really gives the horse a voice and a choice in training and that really helps increase their welfare so after my study i specialized in horses in horse training more and more i became a riding instructor i started doing clinics horse training uh, because the communication between horse and rider was not about that the horse um, was not about that the rider didn't know how to ride all riders know how to ride the circle but what happened if the horse didn't want to cooperate that was where they got stuck so they got really stuck in miscommunication and also based their training on myth so that's what something that i wanted to address so therefore i went from horse riding lessons to giving clinics about horse human connection um, horse behavior and how we can learn more about the horse, what he wants, what he doesn't want, and also training, how to keep them in a learning mode. So this is a little picture of Kira when she joined me in May 2009. She was born in the wild. She was completely wild. As you can see, her eyes are wide open. Her nostrils are open. She's super stressed. She's, she was drowning in sweat because this is a picture I took right after she came out of the trailer. And the picture on the left is also Kira um, 10 years later. Um, I started her on the saddle with positive reinforcement and I went all the way to doing more and more with positive reinforcement. When I immigrated to Canada with my husband, our son, our two cats and Kira in 2012, um, 
in BC, Canada, they were not much interested in clicker training for horses. So I called up a few old clients and, and that's how I started to do online coaching. I also got involved with a lot of animal rescues. So I trained horses at the SPCA in the SPCA barn in, um, in BC in Surrey. And there I learned that the ripple effect of only training with each animal 15 minutes a week has a big, big ripple effect, a positive ripple effect and the transformation, like it transferred to other people too. So yeah, it really opened up their minds and they became eager and interested in people all together, which was such an amazing thing i never thought that could happen because that's not something that happens if you work with aversive trading so hippologic's mission here you can read my values um hippologic's mission is helping horse owners who value their horse's body and soul and struggle to make the transformation from traditional to clicker training so they don't have to fall back on coercion in training and feel guilty about it but bond with the horses instead so how do i do that i do that by in the academy offering a safe supportive environment in which members can learn and develop their positive reinforcement training skills and also establish two-way communication with their horses built in love trust and mutual understanding also mutual trust of course and mutual love because the better we understand their horses um, the better they can understand us and the better our connection will be hippologic i've been working with hippologic uh, i started hippologic a long long time ago and in the early 2000s so i've done a lot of work i was a speaker in different horse events i've been mentioned in um, magazines like the bit that's the most famous dutch magazine uh, horse illustrated i was even in the horse illustrated radio show which is called horses in the morning um so yeah i uh, i've i've been spreading the word about positive reinforcement um, for decades and today i would like to give you a peek into my positive reinforcement training system because if you have a system you always know what to do and if you get stuck you always know at what part you have to pay attention to get uh, moving forward with the rest of your training so I divided it in six key lessons for horses. Those are six foundational behaviors that makes training all future behavior may, way easier and simpler. And also for your horse, it makes it easier to understand. It's like when you have, when you know the alphabet, then you can start reading words. When you can start reading words, you can start reading sentences, alineas, chapters books and so on so without that you make everything so much harder for your horse and then there's also six skills or six keys to success that can help you accelerate your training so that you can get to your goals sooner and what i would like to do is um, today that you will do a little assessment i will talk about that in the worksheets uh, you will have um, the assessments of the key lessons for horses and the keys to success for trainers and it will give you a valuable insight in where you're at and what areas you can approve so what are the benefits of having a training system having a system it doesn't sound sexy it sounds very scientifically but you know what if you work according to a system you can offer your horse clarity and predictability and that's why training according to a system will help you get to your results um, easier so you will always know your next step and you don't skip steps anymore because when you skip a step in this process you will get stuck and if you get stuck, if you have a system, it's easy to recognize where you are stuck and why you don't get the results that you are expecting or want to have. 
you will get predictable training successes. For instance, if I do a demonstration and I want to teach a horse uh, to target, I know I can teach almost every horse uh, that was in five minutes. Mat training will be usually a little bit, takes a little bit longer. Uh, and that's also depending on the horse's uh, experiences and stuff like that. But like knowing that will give me confidence. So it will give you confidence. It will give you clarity and you can train consistently and consistency lead to results. You will hear me say that a lot like consistency, clarity and trust the process. So and this can this all having a system and using a system which is easy step by step that will also help you um, give your horse clarity and if you give your horse clarity it's super easy for him to learn uh, faster so let's take a little look at uh, training a behavior with positive reinforcement because it's different from training a behavior with negative reinforcement we start picking a goal the more clear you are about your goal the easier it is because the next step is to make a shaping plan if you know exactly what it is that you want for instance i want to teach my horse seven steps of spanish walk then you can divide that into smaller steps so it's easy for your horse to understand what it is that he wants to do so if you start with teaching him a, a knee target with a, a pool noodle that's one of the ways that i use to teach horses spanish walk then nobody else thinks that this will turn into a spanish walk but i know it will and I know exactly why, and I know exactly why I train forward for, uh, movement first and then knee target uh, after. So making, having that clarity about what your training process will look like really accelerates learning both for you and um, for your horse. So then you will practice each small step in your shaping plan. And then if you have consistent goal behavior in the beginning, your answer will be no, not yet. So you'll either go um, back to your shaping plan. What's what's the next step and the next step and uh, or you just uh, practice some more. And then one day your answer will be yes, I get consistent behavior. I get consistent Spanish walk. So that's the phase two uh, that you roll into. And in that phase, you will have to change your reinforcement schedule in the beginning when you are doing your shaping plan each step is reinforced 100 percent um, but then you have to go to intermittent to strengthen that behavior you also add a cue in positive reinforcement you only add a cue after the goal behavior is established then once you have a cue you can practice the same behavior into different contexts so that will make that your horse will pay attention more to your cues and less to the environment because i taught here uh, the spanish walk in a specific area of uh, the round pen so once she knew the cue and i faded out the round pen and i went to the arena and the indoor arena the cue she has to rely on she had to rely on my cue so then you uh, prevent that your horse has all these environmental cues and anticipate oh we're in the round pen so that means this behavior no you want your horse to pay attention to you and ask you what behavior do you want from me so shifting context is a very important step in training a behavior and, and making it really, really strong uh, so that your horse listens to your cues. And this is a step that many people um, skip or forget or not realize who, how important that is. Um, in this phase, you also want to fade out your training tools. Um, so this is the part where you uh, click and treat less and get more so and you will have to um, fade out your training tools like the target stick because otherwise the target stick becomes your crutch and becomes a part of the queue and that's something that i see happen when people use the reverse round pen um, the moving target 
becomes the queue and then they cannot fade out that target anymore so they have to move because the target has to move uh, if they don't move their horse won't move so if you can teach your horse to rely on your cue and say trot and the horse will trot without you trotting that's an easier way so if you have a horse that wanders off or um, is 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 not satisfied with a with a verbal praise that's something um, that you can resolve with um, training behavior sequences for instance walk spanish walk walk and then a reinforcement so therefore the first walk is reinforced with another behavior is reinforced with another behavior so if you can reinforce behaviors with other behaviors because you are asking a sequence of behaviors you get more motivation in your horse you get more behavior and you don't have to use that many treats as you can see here on the left i'm training odin to be at liberty in the forest and I uh, can do that with just a little treat pouch of treats because I will know that that is enough because I'm training a sequence of behavior where behavior is reinforced with other behaviors so you don't need that many treats all the time. Also in this phase you will build on duration and it depends on what behavior it is um, how you do that. And in the academy, I'll teach you all the training techniques to do all this. How do you train a cue? How do you train that duration? What training techniques can you use? Because there's so many training techniques that you can use to get to the same result. And it helps if you know that this particular training approach will help better for that behavior so eventually you get a very solid behavior you get a horse that listens to you that is engaged that wait for your cues and that's not frustrated that is in learning mode and this is where you really create the connection because your horse is just paying attention to what it is that you want and ask so in the worksheets uh, you can also have pen and paper and then you just write one through six um those will be the key lessons that you will assess your horse on and it's very simple straightforward assess your horse with a green if your horse is a star with that particular behavior assess your horse with red if he doesn't know that behavior and orange or yellow if it's in between don't overthink it it's super easy so if your horse is still learning consider that as an orange and then if your horse doesn't know that behavior or almost never does that behavior, then a red. It's simple as that. So we're going to assess those six behaviors, which are the basics for training all other behaviors. So when you have a system and teach your horse these foundational behaviors, Oh, it makes your life so much easier. So the first behavior is called table manners. And I call it table manners because just like in humans, we don't have that. Uh, we have to be taught what is food et etiquette. How do we behave on a buffet? No, we are not supposed to run towards the, um, the dessert section and grab everything now we have to stand in line and there's a special order and so on and the same is for table manners most horses have learned that if people have something to eat in their pockets that the treat will fall out if they point out like hey there's something in your pocket that i want uh, we just have reinforced mugging um, so in table manners you teach your horse one safe behaviors if you start with table manners you also teach your horse click means treat and if um that he can influence the treats coming with his own behavior so he will start offering different behaviors and he will learn what works and what doesn't work so in this uh, key lesson he will also learn about the rules and if you uh, teach an end of session signal right away that's one of the training techniques you will give your horse clarity about when to expect a treat and when not to expect a treat so this can really prevent a lot of frustration a lot of uh, un 
clarity um, and uncertainty in your horse. So how do you assess your horse? Green, my horse is a star. It doesn't matter. I can have treats in my pocket and um, he will not pay attention to the treats. Red, my horse mugs me all the time. You know, in between. The next key lesson for horses is called patience. Again, that's also a learned behavior. So in patience, uh, you, I start with teaching the horse. I have uh, super clear criteria. So you start teaching your horse to stand next to you. And then you start to teach your horse to relax. And that relaxation then can help you with the first farrier visit, as you can see here with Kira on the right, that practicing of relaxation really helped for when there was a stranger uh, that start trimming her hoof because she never had that done before. So impatience, um, it really helps to, to teach your horse this also as a default behavior. Uh, it helps your horse to relax. You can train relaxation. Um, you can teach it uh, to teach a horse to offer this behavior so it becomes a two-way communication of waiting for your next cue. So instead of he offering like all the tricks you have trained uh, in the past few weeks, he will offer this safe um, behavior. Um, patience, key lesson, patience makes an excellent default behavior. How would you assess your horse on relaxation and waiting for cues? Green, red, or in between. The next one is targeting. Targeting is teaching your horse to touch a certain object with a certain body part. So we start with nose targeting, like you see here on the left, and then you can use nose targeting, for instance, to create forward movement. Uh, you have to fade out your target stick, as I said already. Otherwise, that becomes your crutch and that becomes really the bottleneck uh, where you can get stuck. As you can see, you can also teach targeting with other body parts. For instance, for Spanish walk, I teach uh, to uh, target with their knee. And once your horse understands the principle of targeting, then it's so easy to train other behaviors. I have trained so many behaviors. I've trained shoulder in, I've trained rain aids with positive reinforcement, using a target. I use it in trailer loading. I use it um, in a lot of husbandry skills. I use targeting all the time because I think this is the most versatile training tool once you have taught it to your horse. So in the beginning, when it's a key lesson, it's your goal to teach a horse nose targeting. And when you use it to train other more complex behaviors, then targeting is your training tool. So that's the purpose of these key lessons, that it become your training tools to train other behavior easier and faster and give more clarity about your horse. So for instance, if you train other body parts to target, you can uh, teach your horse to target with the corner of their mouth, their lips, for deworming, for haunches in. Um, uh, you can teach your horse to target their ears for if they're halter shy and so on. So how would you assess your horse on nose targeting? So he's a star green, he doesn't know that or doesn't offer it consistently. The next one is mat training. So mat training is super important as a basic behavior because you can send your horse away from you without you um, chasing him away from you. Um, you can create distance between you and your horse. Uh, you can use it, for instance, to teach ground tying. Um, it can help with trailer loading because teaching your horse to step onto unfamiliar objects like a ramp or here a scale uh, to weigh your horse is, is really helpful because your horse has done it before. He has stepped onto so many um, unfamiliar new services. He will trust you um, because mat training is basically targeting for their feet. 
So how would you assess your horse on mat training? The next one is head lowering. Head lowering is really easy uh, to teach. It can help with in a lot of situation. It can help um, calm your horse down. It can also help you to assess how his um, anxiety is. Horses that are not relaxed, horses that are almost over threshold, they do not lower their head. So it can also become a part of that two-way communication. How do you feel? Well, I'm not feeling to lower my head, so because I'm anxious and stressed. The other uh, thing that head lowering is important, it is important in haltering and bridling uh, tall horses, but you can also use it in movement under saddle, but also it's very easy to have a cue, for instance a verbal cue, if you work at liberty and want to teach your horse to use his uh, body in a better way, because they cannot just press their uh, back down and have their head down at the same time. So it can really help them, teach them how to use their body in a more healthy way, for instance. How would you assess your horse at head lowering with positive reinforcement? Green, orange, red. And the last one is backing. Backing is also, again, a safety behavior it's super important but not only that you can create more distance between you and your horse as you can see on the left you can teach it with targeting like i said targeting is so versatile um backing it can help your horse to become more agile and it helps uh, for instance to get your horse through a gate that he backs up um and advanced behaviors that backing is the foundation for is for instance if you teach a horse uh, crunches because then you have to teach a horse to bring his weight and shift his weight to the hind uh, quarters so that's how i taught my horse the school hold uh, the lavada there are so many ways um, that you can use backing for other advanced behaviors how would you assess your horse on backing with positive reinforcement? So the next part is about the keys to success for trainers. These are some skills that you need to have as trainers or some training tools. So assess yourself with a green if you do these things consistently. Uh, orange if you do them most of the time. Red if you don't do them at all. So the first key to success for trainers is really knowing the principles of learning and motivation. So the principles of learning is knowing what is natural behavior for your learner. There's different techniques that you use if you train dogs than if you train horses. For instance, for dogs and cats, you can throw your treat away and then they will follow the treat because they're predators. But if you do that with horses and you haven't trained follow the carrot that is flying, because carrots usually don't fly, the horse is usually like, where's my carrot? Because they can see it, but if you haven't trained them, then the other part, for instance, is we usually work in an arena with a sandy surface. You don't want them to eat from the sand all of the time, because that can cause colics. So knowing the natural behavior of your target animal is very, very important. Knowing his body language, knowing the principles of uh, what is positive reinforcement and is my horse positively reinforced by the behavior he's doing or is he avoiding something? Is it negative reinforcement that makes him do a specific behavior and what is going on and reading him and the more we know that the more we learn about them and also motivation is a very important part because that is very individual kira did not eat carrots in the wild they don't eat carrots so carrots and apples she didn't eat them so i couldn't use them as reinforcers so it's very important to know what motivates your horse if your horse walks away when you're training him 
is he walking away because he wants to avoid something you are doing or is he moving towards something that has a higher reinforcement if he moves if he moves away to go nibble on some grass that is growing in the arena it can be because the grass is just simply higher reinforcer higher value than what you offer um, as treat in training but if you know that you can say like let's use grass as reinforcer for this session so if your horse is very eager very um, uh, engaged in your training if he learns fast then you have nailed the principles of learning and motivation um, if you struggle in training if you see a lot of frustration in your training or your horse wanders off because your um, sessions are um, boring to him then I would pick another color uh, to assess myself the next one is having a training plan and a training plan in in this context how I use it is uh, different from a shaping plan I'll get to that but the training plan is really a vision board what do you want to accomplish I've had clients that want to wanted to trail ride with their horses so when I was a riding instructor in the Netherlands I always um, took their uh, vision board and we worked consistently on that because then I can say okay you need to know this because if you know this and if your horse knows that then you can use it to calm your horse down on trails so therefore head lowering can be very important backing can be very important to teach your horse that under saddle so if you know everything you do fits into your bigger goal it works very motivating for you you also know that you don't get distracted by um, spending time and effort on training behaviors that are not really in your vision uh, or on your vision board so you can really get better results because everything is targeted towards your own personal goal with your horse do you have a vision board for your horse and then the next one is shaping plan so shaping plan some people call it a training plan but I call it a shaping plan once you know the behaviors that you want to train the behaviors that are on your vision board then you can take one of those behaviors and say I'm going to make a shaping plan and a shaping plan is writing down all the steps um, that helps you train your goal behavior and a shaping plan is a living document you always have to get back adjust it according to the feedback that you get from your horse in training so do you use training plans for every new behavior that you're training green consistently red almost never in between the next one is accountability usually um, it really helps to have accountability if you notice that you're struggling to train your goal behaviors to accomplish the dream that you have for you and your horse uh, take a look at accountability do you have enough accountability do you have somebody who checks in weekly like hey how is it going and not only that like what have you been doing have you been training consistently because if you don't train you don't advance your horse so yes that sounds like an open door but still if you work on your own and you're the only clicker trainer in your environment um, consistency uh, in training can can be a real bottleneck and if you have a group of people who come together weekly to discuss their their goals but also talk about the best approach with positive reinforcement then that can really help um, with your motivation so if you have been doing online courses and you have weekly accountability um, you will notice that that will fizzle out after you stop the course and or the course ends and then the first week after the course you're still doing it in the second week and then and then it fizzles out so in the academy it's all 
uh, focused on that you have accountability for a whole year. And can you imagine that if you have a goal behavior and you would train consistently towards that for a longer period of time, how well your results um, will show for it? How do you assess yourself on accountability? If you build that in, maybe you have internal accountability and just writing it down in your own calendar can be enough or um, maybe you need some external accountability. The next one is tracking your training. That is super important because if, if you know exactly what you did, how long you did it, what your results were, you can just do more of what will give you results and less of what didn't give you results. Um, there's several ways. I teach a training journal, which takes less than two minutes to uh, fill in because I don't want that to become a struggle point like, oh, I have to fill in my training journal and it takes so much time, so I'll skip it. Because if you can do this, and I advise always people to do that, like try it out for two or three weeks. Because after three weeks, you can see really the results because you're not only having to track your training, but you also have to evaluate your training. By writing it down, it's easy to evaluate. Another important tool is videos. Make videos of your training on a regular basis. In the academy, I will ask you to make a video every week. And it's super fun to see that even after a month, after four weeks, people see an huge difference in how they start and then what they have accomplished just by knowing more about the principles of learning and motivation, getting more techniques um, uh, handed out to try out, all tailored to their specific situation. And then the third one is making pictures. I did that uh, just as a motivational tool for myself. I even made a photo album of the first two years Every month I made a picture of every behavior I trained with my formerly wild horse. And, and it turns out that uh, I did a lot of behaviors. If I hadn't done that, if I hadn't tracked the training and the results that I got, gotten, I wouldn't be as confident because you, you will forget. You will forget that maybe it was a struggle to uh, teach a horse to be haltered. Uh, maybe it was a struggle uh, to do this or that and then you have accomplished it and it's really really easy to downplay your own results uh, once you have accomplished them we are stars at that uh, usually so um, tracking your training is really a key to success if you start doing that um, and there's ways to do it in uh, yeah, with a training journal that really helps you evaluate your training as well so that you can become an autonomous clicker training and do this by yourself. That's my goal for you. How would you assess yourself on tracking your training and evaluating your training? And the last one that leads to success is or, or struggle points and can really hold you back is if you don't read the emotions in your horse or realize about what is going on with emotions um, in yourself. If you get frustrated, what do you do? Do you just do more because you cannot give up because that's what you've been taught? Or can you say, oh, I noticed that I'm really getting frustrated and take a step back and, and ask yourself, how come? Usually it's because you are skipping steps in your shaping plan or didn't make a shaping plan so your expectations are too high not realistic so that's what can cause frustration if you're frustrated you cannot be patient and set your horse up for success so being able to read your horse's body language uh, to see if he's happy um, to see if he's understanding or maybe struggling a little bit with don't understand it is super important. So how would you assess yourself um, regarding emotions in training? Can you recognize your horse's emotions? But also if your horse is frustrated, can you get him back into relaxation? 
and in learning mode because that is really a good tool to have. And then I would like to um, share with you how this uh, works in a system. So the underlined words are the key lessons for trainers. So you start with the end in mind. It's a training plan. It's your goals. It's your vision board. Um, you list all the behaviors. That's your next step. And then you pick one of the things that you want to start training. Then you make a training plan, a shaping plan, I mean. Um, which is, of course, based on the principles of learning and motivation. Um, your shaping plan is made to train this with positive reinforcement. Um, you take into account uh, the target animal, horses, their natural behavior, and what motivates your particular uh, individual learner. Then you have to practice, because in practicing and it's sometimes it's hard to start because um, you feel like, oh, what if I make a mistake? And that can really hold you back. So, but it's only in the doing that you get the results. And it's only in the actual training that you can get feedback from your horse. And that is super valuable because the feedback will, will give you information in how you can make everything better for your horse and easier for yourself so the practice part is really where the accountability comes in and you always have to course correct because we cannot predict the future even after 25 years of making shaping plans for basic behaviors key lesson i can make a shaping plan that that probably will uh work um, but there's only like a 90% guarantee because I will stumble upon that one particular individual uh, that says, based on my experience with humans, my history, my learning history, uh, I need something else for you. For instance, I had a horse that was afraid of round objects. So a tennis ball on a stick was super uh, frightening for him and it this was in a demonstration and somebody else pointed out somebody who uh, knew a lot about horses she said like hmm this particular horse was also having like a fear reaction to that person with a toque with a little uh, pom-pom on her head so we just tried it out it was feedback from the horse what if uh, maybe you want to target with a little uh, cone the cone didn't evoke that fear reaction and with in no time we could teach the the horse to target with a cone and then later it was also easier to teach him to target um to a round object so we always have to adjust in the back like what i said the emotions the heart represents the desired emotions, the emotions that help learning, like curiosity and, and novelty and, and feeling good and eagerness and then a little lightning bolt are the emotions that we uh, will come across like frustration, anger, fear, and that can inhibit learning. So the more we are aware of those, uh, the better trainer we can be for our horses. So then we have to adjust so maybe we have to uh, make a different decision to train a different uh, behavior first where will help us lay the foundation for the other behavior or we can just go to our shaping plan and we go back to practicing and this is how you go around and around so before we go to the assaults of uh, the results of your assessment i want to give you a peek into the academy this weekend, the academy is open for enrollment. The purpose is to have 40 st students maximum in the academy because I really want to tailor it to each student. And learning in a group will give you the opportunity to learn more because maybe your horse isn't afraid but we have somebody in the academy that uh, works with a mustang and that mustang has a lot of fear so by just seeing all the things that we do together to help that horse become confident and how clicker training can help 
that horse become confident, that will give you an extra tool and, and experience for the time maybe you need it. Maybe you see a fear reaction in your horse and then you have already the tools and the approaches what to do. So therefore, I like to help people on an individual basis in the group. Uh, we have weekly clicker coaching sessions uh, on Zoom once a week for uh, one to one and a half hours, depending on the group size. Um, uh, students get access to uh, different clicker courses. All the courses have lots and lots of training videos so that you can uh, do some uh, learning on your own. Um, they have shaping plans and downloadable training tools like uh, the, the training journal. Uh, and more and you learn all kinds of techniques how to train behaviors because that depends on the horse right you get personal advice and tailored feedback on your training videos one training video a week so that will be 52 videos if you send in every week so that's also why i limit the amount of students in the academy to 40 because that will be the maximum capacity um, next to my uh, private client uh, as well and we have a, a private facebook group to connect with our clicker tribe we are small tribe at the moment but I've been doing this for a couple of years, so in the Facebook group there's tons and tons of videos uh, with my tailored advice and feedback, so you can start learning a lot right away. Why I think you should join? Well, this is really for people who really want to develop a bond with the horse in training to create a two-way communication that you can really develop that language between each uh, you and your horse because the more your horse realizes that you are listening that you are paying attention the more information he will give to you and which is such a beautiful process to um, watch you will build a solid foundation it takes time to train your horse it takes time to develop your trainer skills it's not something that happens in four or eight weeks um, after four or eight weeks you have to keep going at it so by offering people coaching for a whole year that's the purpose because it just takes time to develop and also, for instance, if you have a goal, if you have a young horse and you want to start your horse under saddle, that's something that I help people with. It's not a matter of six weeks. It's a matter of, it's a process. Uh, your horse has to develop uh, to become a, a riding horse. So if you take a year, then you can do that in a year. And it's not something that I want to accomplish in six weeks because that doesn't benefit the horse and that's my personal um, opinion based on my personal values who how I see horses and training um, I hope you will join because then you have access to a positive reinforcement tribe if you are surround yourself with people that all use natural horsemanship it can be really really struggle to train your horse because you know people are watching that have completely opposite training values from you and i've had people in the academy that were verbally abused because they're using positive reinforcement and other people don't understand that so having a tribe that understand what it is that you're doing and that you're always listening to your horse and make it a win-win instead of a compromise um, where your horse is the loser and you're the winner so just knowing that you have a tribe that has your back that supports you that that can tell you yes you are on the right way instead of listening to people who tell you like you're spoiling your horse because you're using treats it's just not true so being in an environment that is supportive is is one of your success keys <laughs> and what a unique about the academy is i have looked into other uh, membership programs 
and there's a lot of good ones out there absolutely don't get me wrong but what unique is is that you get weekly group coaching because you need to course correct if you have only once a month q a and maybe your question isn't even addressed that means that you can be struggling for eight weeks if you get weekly group coaching and have a facebook group you never have to get stuck for longer than just a few days it's easy for me if you have a question and you put it in the facebook group it's very easy for me especially if i have seen training videos from you and your horse to say oh in this case i would try this and then you don't have to stay stuck for longer and if you move on faster you develop your skills faster you train more behaviors so if that makes sense so the other thing that i do is personal go coaching on one video a week for every member and not for eight weeks no the whole year so yeah that is really so uh, the academy is really for people who are um or starting or novice at it and really want to build on a solid foundation so after a year they can just become autonomous clicker trainer and can resolve uh, their own challenges or people who are really advanced and need some advanced stuff and and want to uh, to train complex behaviors um, and that's really also uh, what excites me to have people of different levels because we all learn from each other like if i work with people who are very new uh, to clicker training it really uh, reminds me of yes how important is timing oh you're you're going to this oh i forgot about that let's uh use that for my own horses again so advanced training and advanced clicker training um, is just knowing the basics really 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 well um, and that takes time so if you join today this weekend the academy is open in the worksheets there is a link at the end like learn more about the hypologic clicker training academy it's a purple button if you click that link in your pdf you will find the link to join if you have questions you can book a call with me or send an email uh, if you join your membership fee uh, never goes up so every year you pay what you're paying today if you join in the future the the, the membership fee will go up but the purpose now is to to make it affordable for everybody with a maximum of 40 students so it's a very unique um, program um, so the price will go up uh, in the future you'll get weekly group coaching live group coaching there's always recording and if you cannot join us you can send in the questions and I will address your questions um, you get tailored feedback on one training video per week so that what that really entails is that that I would say like this is what you're doing well. This is what I want you to see more of. This is really going well. Your timing is good. Uh, you have the right reinforcers. And here's what you can improve. And I'm really, really specific about that because I can see what your horse is saying. So um, based on his feedback, oh, your horse is is getting a little bit frustrated here do you see his tail swish because we can think that uh, we can even not noticing it but we can also think it didn't mean anything or we can think okay that was because there's a lot of flies but in combination with their ears and the rest of their posture I can see hmm is it flies maybe he's irritated by flies maybe he's irritated by you or what you're doing and then we can analyze that and then you can improve so it's really yeah I really deep dive into that so that's why it's super valuable to have that tailored training we also uh, will work together on the confident clicker training course it's an eight-week course with coaching it's nine hundred dollars 
Um, we have in September the movement at liberty. Um, and having the basics first will really help you excel in that course. Uh, that's a $600 course. It's always in September, but uh, it's also shorter uh, than uh, eight weeks. And uh, grass training, because if you work at Liberty or if you want to do trail riding, lots of people struggle with grass drivers. So I have this course, grass training, which is uh, $197. You also get a supportive tribe with the Facebook group, so you will never have to stay stuck uh, longer than a few days. Can you imagine how much results you can get if you have that on a consistent basis? And even if you go on to holiday after you come back, you just um, still have all that support. So the total value will be about $12,000. Canadian dollars that is and if you join today um, the membership for a whole year is 1500 Canadian dollars so what will we do the first quarter uh, we will work on a personal training plan a vision board for you and your horse so we'll really focus on these behaviors I will uh, break them down for you I will help you write shaping plans for them and we will really focus on the six key lessons of horses and uh, the six keys to success uh, for trainers then after that it will be spring grass will be coming up and um, uh, we will focus on grass training, we will start uh, movement training, and we will also work on your personal goals. But I couldn't put that in there because I don't know you or what your goals are. But we are absolutely working on your personal goals uh, for a whole year. Then uh, the third quarter will be focused on uh, some husbandry skills, skills for horses. We can do something with water uh, because it's summer. If you're in Australia, it's winter, but we will figure it out. Things as uh, leaving the herd, herd boundness, um, that will all be, be so easy if you have the basics that we will address in the first three months. And then uh, the last quarter will be advanced um, advanced things uh, advanced liberty training uh, advanced husbandry skills uh, and also all the, the things that you have on your vision board so let's go to the assessment um, you have assessed six key behaviors for horses and the six skills for trainers so uh, the green means mastery perfect uh, keep going what doing what you're doing because it works um orange those are the things that need your attention and red that's really the parts that need work if you can turn your reds into oranges and your oranges into greens and that's what i do in the academy then you become an autonomous clicker trainer you can solve your own struggles um and that's how you become really really advanced so this assessment will give you ideas of where you can uh, focus on because you don't really need to focus on on the green um, behaviors and skills i would suggest start with turning one of the the things that you assessed with a red that you're kind of missing in training right now and focus on that so that you can work your ways to turning all those colors into greens so what do you notice if you look at all the colors that you have and now we are going to um, answer the questions that people had in their um, in their registration and the first question is how can you extinguish unwanted behaviors 